Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I'm George. We're all George. So tonight, got more FTX drama, more details to share with you guys, including the Bahamas. The Bahamian insiders, the regulators, they may have a significant amount of assets on hand. What is that about? And also, other stuff. So let's talk about everything and what to expect for tomorrow, because we do have a big Bitcoin event tomorrow as well. So let's talk about all these things and more. So welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Looking at Bitcoin, hey, it's slowly, slowly, slowly trending upwards. Very slowly. And we're right back to 19 or 69. <laughs> I want to say 19. Uh, excuse me. But we are trending upwards. So that's a start. Contagion, even though it's spreading... Seems to be, I don't know, more contained than, than some of the previous crashes before. So that's that's pretty positive. But there's just still, I know a lot of you guys are sick of hearing about SBF, FTX, Alameda. I am too. But there's just so much to talk about. I mean, right now, this is what everyone's talking about. I'm trying to discover what happened, what's going on, right? Um, so there's more. So now, uh, there's more reports about this collusion that was planned all along. In fact, Nansen, which is the research company that's been doing proof of reserves for all these other exchanges, they did the research and concluded that at one point in time, Alameda and FTX control 86, 86% of all FTT, okay? And when one entity holds 86% of the circuit supply, you can imagine, uh, you can manipulate the hell out of it, okay? That is the reason why it went from $0.10 to $84 in 2021 because simply they were holding it all. There was very little to be sold, and of course, they manipulated the price by buying even more, right? And they utilized the FTT as collateral, took out loans, and then used the loans to buy more FTT, and then they kept doing that and kept doing that. So they kept manipulating the price to get it to, to become one of the top, you know, top 20 coins uh, of 2021. But of course, when fear erupts and everyone wants to sell, right, that's when liquidations happen. Their loans get margin called. And, and you know what? They couldn't sell any FTT because that would cause more of a downfall. Right, so this whole thing really backfired, but that's not all, though. I think a lot of us know. Yeah, there there has to be collusion. I mean, both companies created by SPF. It's out one pocket into another, right? But here's the thing: SPF then turned around and asked for one billion in personal loan. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if you go to a bank and say, "I want to borrow one billion dollars," right? Like. How difficult that would be. But of course, if you own FTX and Alameda, well, getting a loan is very easy. So he took out $1 billion himself in a personal loan. And not just him. His counterpart, Nishad, the one that 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 SBF claims is feeling really bad, took a half billion loan. $543 million. These are personal loans. They're not for the company. So what did they do with that money? A billion dollars and $543 million. That's insane. Insane. And it's probably a zero interest loan too. So part of the funds that lost could be because this is $1.5 billion right there. Right? It's just absolutely insane. And of course, because of this connection, right, this new FTO CEO the one that that oversaw the the Enron bankruptcy. I mean, he's been covering things left and right, right. Besides a forty five million dollar mansion, they've been buying penthouses and all this stuff left and right. But of course, because Alameda, you know, had this close relation with FTX, they were granted exemption from their auto liquidation feature, margin call. So if Alameda did something bad. And their their leverage was what was getting really negative, right? They should be just like liquidated. They should be margin called. But no, 
because SBF then, of course, said, nah, you know, don't worry about it. We'll just get rid of the auto liquidation feature. So you could just be, you know, in leverage forever. So stuff like that, right? This is why the new CEO is saying, I've never, ever seen anything this bad before. Not even Enron, because you just had a bunch of really kids. I, I can't even call them kids because they're like, you know, late 20s, 30. But still, a bunch of kids that just just winged it, right? They just winged it. They manipulated. They they just shifted money left and right and thought that, you know, it, it just works out. But then it gets more interesting. And I don't know how this plays into it. And maybe others have already looked into it. But because FTX is in the Bahamas, right? There's some kind of connection there. Just like my thumbnail. SBF was breaking ground with all these higher ups in the Bahamas. So now it seems like um, the Bahamian regulators or the insiders I was working with SBF asked SBF to send their assets to them. This was unauthorized. This was not legal. No one said that FTX could do this. But I don't know if there was an inside connection or they were coerced. I don't know what happened, but there's this emergency court filing that was revealed um, that says that SBF transferred these assets to the custody of Bahamian government. How much was transferred? I don't know. Is it still there? What was the primary reason for that? So people are trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Like, exactly how much was there? And why was it requested? This was unauthorized, right? So there's this this kind of stuff that's going on right now, too. So there's just so much, so much stuff. And, of course, SBF, he fired his legal consoles because they probably all did not want anything to do with this. So now he's working with another lawyer that happens to be his dad's friend. Okay, so there, there's, there's, there's just all these connections. And his dad's friend also was the mentor of Gary Gensler, right? So you could see the connection there. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening. And that is why there are people now, right, that are petitioning to investigate Gary Gensler because of his ties to not only SBF but also Caroline. Right. So there's all these connections left and right. And there's actually a petition right now on change.org. Uh, 3,400 people have signed. So hopefully more of you guys sign it. And then maybe, maybe he will get investigated. So, I mean, there's still a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening. Uh, and also there might be a sex tape that's, uh, that's going to be released tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if this is true. <laughs> But supposedly there's an insider that says they have a sex date between SBF and Caroline. And they must be held accountable. And if they're not, uh, it's going to be released tomorrow. So we will see. Maybe we'll get a treat for this weekend. Um, but in addition to that, uh, there are a lot of people who think that, well, since we only have, you know, a one and a half uh, months left of this year, this will probably be the last big giant to fall this cycle. Okay, we already had Luna, we had the Rails Capital, we had Celsius, Voyager, now BlockFi, and now FTX, right, and possibly Genesis. I mean, there's a lot that fell uh, and currently falling, but FTX could be the last giant of this cycle, which, of course, is very good because that means all the bad actors are gone, right, and what we're left with are the good actors, so, so we'll see. We will see if this is true. But there are, there are things to look forward to. Despite FTX, despite everything SBF and Caroline has done, and, uh, and all the mess, you know, that, that we're faced with right now, right? There are still reasons why this fiasco is bullish for Bitcoin. Well, I mentioned the biggest one because... We have weeded out all the bad, right? The ones that were risky with their assets, risky with leverage, didn't have quality control or, or any kind of safeguards in place. Well, they're, 
they're all gone. They're out of the picture, right? So that's that's the good thing. Also, another great thing is the fact that people are starting to learn how to self custody their own crypto, right? So the volume of DEXs are going up. That's fantastic. People are learning that, right? But also people, the volume of people downloading a wallet and buying a wallet has also gone up. So that is also very positive. And lastly, I would argue the amount of Bitcoin flowing out of the exchanges is also very, very positive. We're, we're seeing massive, massive millions of Bitcoin flowing out of, Bit, out of the exchanges into cold wallets and self-hosted and self-custody wallets, right? So the more Bitcoin that leaves the exchanges, the better it is overall because there's less circling out there, less chance for people to panic dump or panic sell. So there are good things that's coming out of this, right? Short term, it may not seem like it, but long term, these are all fantastic things that we have going on right now. So very good. Very good indeed. Uh, what else is there? Tomorrow, we have a big, big 600 million Bitcoin's options expiration. Uh, usually when there's like a big options expiration, there is going to be some volatility, right? So the bears are trying to pin Bitcoin under 16K. The bulls are trying to pin it above 17. Remember, I've been saying recently, how Bitcoin can't break above 17. Every time it tries to hit it, it goes down, right? Could be because of Bitcoin options. There's a lot of bears that are trying to suppress Bitcoin below 17,000. But afterwards, we could see the pressure released and Bitcoin finally make some headway up especially seeing how oversold it is, right? But the fundamentals, I've been telling you guys, the fundamentals of Bitcoin has remained strong. The holders are remaining strong. Really, the, the, the insiders, I would say, are, are holding, and they're not going anywhere. And here's a good, good example. Australian firm raises $28 million to expand Bitcoin mining capability. A lot of the Bitcoin miners continue to load up on miners, and that is why the hash rate and difficulty is still on the rise. So these are great, great things that are happening. Uh, also, if you're looking at TA, a lot of people are looking at this, this broadening wedge that Bitcoin is in right now. And you could see in 2019, it was a very small wedge. In 2020, it was a little bigger wedge. And in 2022, this is the biggest one we have seen pretty much ever in Bitcoin's history. What's great about this wedge is every single time Bitcoin recovers, it gets back up to the top trend line, right, of the wedge. And that usually means we have a pretty ferocious recovery. In 2019, it meant we went back up to about $4,000, $5,000 before breaking back to $6,000 and beyond. In 2020, we went all the way back to $10,000 from a low of $3,000. Or 4,000, right? And if you're looking at where we are right now, and we actually do break up to the top of that trend line, we're talking about a 30,000 range, right? And we were on our way there. To be honest, we were there. We were at 25,000 already, only a few thousand points off. And then we had a lot of macro scare, inflation fears, right? And then now the FTX collapsed, but we were on our way. So we're not too far for, off from there. And that could be what we're looking at in the near future. Um, and also, this is looking at a funding rate. Funding rate is basically the premium that people are paying to either open a long or a short. And the funding rate is a negative right now. In the last two times this has happened before, you could see what happened, right? In 2019 or 2018, um, no, in 2020, I'm sorry, 2020, the COVID crash, right? We had that huge dip, and then we came back up. In 2021, we had that mid-bull season, bull run dip, right? And now we're seeing it once again. Again, another great sign that better days are coming. All right, um, that's pretty much it for the FTX stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I covered. A lot of you guys are VeChain fans. VeChain just launched their POA 2.0, which makes this chain more secure, a hell of a lot more secure, combining two consensus, including Bitcoin Shatoshi's consensus, with uh, 
with proof of stake. So they're combining the best of both worlds. So the chain becomes more secure. Also, they're working towards you know DeFi and growing out that ecosystem and making it more uh, decentralized. And you know what? It's a, it's a step in the right direction. So it's good for VeChain. Uh, outside of crypto news, just a few other macro stuff or just interesting things. Uh, Elon and his experiment with Twitter is like really doing poorly right now. So Elon gave an ultimatum, first of all, that there will be no remote work. Second of all, if you want to stay at Twitter, you have to work very, very long hours and be under extreme, you know, conditions. And after employees heard that, they're like, yeah, we're, we're out of here <laughs> because the labor market is still strong. There are still people that can jump jobs left and right. And that's exactly what a lot of these guys are doing at Twitter. So uh, the blue check mark thing is not working out very well. So I don't know what Elon is going to do to turn things around. I hope hopefully he does. And all the Tesla guys really hate the fact that Elon got in Twitter all at all because Tesla stock has been suffering greatly too. So we will see. We will see what he does. Uh, and then lastly, I saw this. Nancy Pelosi is stepping down from uh, from leadership. She will stay. She will stay in the House, but she no longer is going to be the leader. And that's after what? She served twice as Speaker in her 35 years in the House. I don't know what to think of this. I just thought I'd bring it up because a lot of you guys will probably find this interesting. <laughs> um, all right. That is pretty much it. Bitcoin, you know what? Still below this trend line, still below 17,000. There's the options tomorrow, right? Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But overall, stay strong, guys. We will get through this FTS saga and SBF and Caroline and all this good stuff. All right. Let's do Q&A. Looking into the comments, a lot of people are looking forward to that sex tape being released. <laughs> It would be wild if that's actually true and it gets released on wherever. Um, I'm not going to name the site names. Uh, I'm sure you guys know them, but that would be wild if it actually gets released. But uh, probably not. Um, SBF parents and professors at Stanford Law. Oh, I saw something else too. Elizabeth Warren, a.k.a. Pocahontas. You know how she's so against crypto, right? Uh, she was actually mentored by SBF's dad, Joseph uh, Bankman-Fried. So there's a connection there. It's it's like connecting everywhere. Uh, Sam is asking, possible impact on large miners having their electricity scaled back by some countries this winter? I I don't know. Only if they are in Europe. I would say Europe will probably scale back electricity use. Um, but I don't know. Uh, the, the U.S., for example, miners in the U.S. are not going to be affected. I'm not sure where else is really affected by high energy costs right now outside of Europe. I don't know. There's a 257 clip from Dan Fredberg about creating counterfeit coins. I think I saw that. He was just having a... An interview with someone, right, or something. It actually doesn't show him creating anything. So I, I'm not sure what he's referring to. 
but you know it's a possibility. What? But then again, why did they need to create counterfeit coins? They have FTT. FTT was created out of thin air, right? So they could have created more if they wanted to. Bob DeLego, no, ner Bob DeLego, ner no, I'm not going to go live when a sex tape comes out. No. No. Um... Thoughts on Casper coin? I mean, I'll just say it looks promising. That's about it. I haven't really done a deep dive on them. What's your take on Pancake Swaps? Cake Token and DeFi. I mean, Pancake Swap was the biggest dex on Binance Smart Chain. Well, unfortunately, they had a hack. And that really set them back. But I know they're still operating, um, you know, Binance is BSC or Binance Smart Chain. I think the biggest weakness is that they don't have more DeFi projects. Their usage is going up, though. But, you know, their DeFi is still very limited. Um, I, I take that back. It's not very limited. It's just very limited versus Ethereum. But overall, it's not limited. But uh, if they could get more DEXs that support BSC, it would be, it would be really good. But Pancake Swap, I don't know. In terms of these swap companies, I think their volume are gonna go up exponentially up. But whether that translates to an increase in price on on these tokens for the DEXs, I'm not sure. Cosmos were more affected by Terra's collapse than FTX. Yeah, because Cos uh, Terra's Luna was uh, created from uh, Cosmos SDK, and also the DEX's shared collateral. So yeah. You should react to the sex tape on George React. Uh, I have not created a, a a video on George React's channel for a long time. I it would be really wild if this is true. I don't I don't think so, but it would be really wild if this was true. Should the Lakers fire Rob Palinka? I don't know. Rob Palinka did a really good job assembling the championship team. And then it all came apart. So I think they need to trade. I, I, you know, at this point, I would trade AD. You know, offer offer KD to the Nets for Kevin Durant, pair Durant and LeBron up together, see what they could do. Change a thumbnail <laughs> to a sex tape hype. <laughs> I was thinking about that, but I'm like, come on, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> I was thinking about making this the main topic for tonight, but I'm like, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta be a little more serious. Can you review the Divi, uh, Divi wallet, non-custodial iOS wallet? Is it just iOS? If so, I can't review it because I don't use iOS device. Can these shenanigans actually help Chainlink? I'm, I'm not sure. No. It has nothing to do with Chainlink. Chainlink helps projects with data retrieval or data fetching. So it has really nothing to do with you know, FTX or self-custody. Uh, the true king, thank you. Uh, Franco, do you think this person who holds a sex tape could use it to extort SBF and Caroline into telling them all the truth? That's the point. The, the threat is not because they want to do it. The threat is that he wants or he or she wants them to be account held accountable, right? 
but whether or not that's that's happening, it doesn't seem like it. So I don't know. But I think that's the main intention. Oh, man. I'm glad we're having a good laugh over it. But, you know, it'll be wild if it, it is released. Anyways, um, can you uh, dex directly off a of ledger? Well, Ledger Live has its own swap, and it's also integrated with Binance. So from that perspective, yes. But if you want to connect it directly to, like, Uniswap, I don't believe you could do that yet. Uh, I may be wrong on that. I have not tried. If you go to Uniswap, usually with DEXs, I always just use a MetaMask. Um, and MetaMask supports a like, variety of chains, right? So I think you're going to be limited in trading directly off a of ledger. Thoughts on stably USD stablecoin launching on XRP Ledger? I mean, okay, it's uh it's a stable coin, nothing to be excited about. I mean, I'm not excited about it. Uh Chef says you could link your ledger to MetaMask and have it linked to your hardware wallet where you need to sign a transaction. Okay. Good to know. I'd never do that though. Like, I just feel like if you have a crypto on your ledger, you just not touch it, right? Only move the crypto that you really don't want to ever touch into your ledger. And you could leave some crypto, say, in MetaMask or on a centralized exchange if you want to just use that to trade. But have vast majority or a lot of it into a cold wallet or mobile wallet that you never really touch, right? That's kind of how I see it. Kind of like separation. You think exchange coins are bad now with what happened with FTX? I mean, yes and no. Outside of FTT was never really that strong. It was strong for a little period in 2021, but it, it dropped off in strength. Um, the only exchange coin that I, I feel like is worthy of really being held is BNB. And that's because Binance is who they are. And they have a chain and there's usage and burning, all this stuff, right? But the other ones, I feel like like KuCoin, they were doing okay. You do get dividend from it and they do have a chain, but it's very, very limited. And then you have others that copied, right? Like the Hoibi token, the Gate token, and all these other tokens. I feel like none of them really have any use. Uh, you know, the exchanges are released it because they're like, hey, everyone else is doing it, let's do it too, right? So I wouldn't hold on to any of those. I would just hold on to tokens from exchanges that actually have use. Like Crypto.com has the Kronos token because they have their own chain too, right? So look at the ones that actually have some use rather than just be a, a pure governance token. I'm just drinking ice water. What do you, what, what do you think this is? <laughs> it's just clear liquid. It's not, it's not iced vodka or anything. Any way to short this uh, sex tape will be on Binance. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yeah. How do you explain to us how is it possible you enter your 12 word key phrase? How does the wallet not have your keys? Well, it's just all encrypted. It's not in your server. It's all local, so that's the difference. It's not like they store it in their server. So it's encryption to basically get you access to your private key. Okay, That's the difference between an exchange, which is your private key is held by somewhere else. Uh, Ledger is not. It's local. That's why if the company Ledger goes out of business, you can still recover your private key with your Ledger or with any other wallet 
because basically it's a very sophisticated encryption that takes a private key and then and encrypts it into this recovery phrase, right? Um, but that's the reason, because it's not actually stored on their server at all. It's stored in a blockchain. <laughs> Imagine Bitcoin pumping to 100K after the sex tape. Uh, Gensler at the tape will be fire. We're having way too much fun with that. You could use one inch on Ledger Live. That's what I use. You know what, though? I don't like one inch because uh, because of the name. No. Uh, it's because they, they're a DEX aggregator. They're supposed to be neutral, but they block U.S. citizens from making trades on some tokens. And it shouldn't be like that, but they do. Ever since I discovered that, because I forgot which token I was trading, I was on one inch and tried to trade. And they're like, no, you can't trade because you're in the US. Uh, after that, I was like, screw it. I'm never going to use one inch again. Alameda is also cl closely tied to one inch. Well, that's another reason not to use them. Oh, man. If my trust wallet gets lost with my phone, the recovery phrase can be used in any other brand wallet to recover my crypto. Yes. Yes. Is Vitalik long on Caroline? Oh, Vitalik's long, all right. He's long all day all night all right guys that is it let's all wait for midnight that's when the sex tape comes out let's all stay up for that uh but for those of you guys that are not staying up make sure you tune in tomorrow 8 30 8 15 a.m central standard time get some rest and we'll cover more about bitcoin crypto ftx tomorrow and let's see what happens after the options expiration. All right. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Oh, by the way, by the way, I do have a copy that was hiding from you guys. So if you guys want to see it, take a look. What do you think about Ripple? Well, I mean, I think it's too centralized, but I definitely want to meet Chris Larson. <laughs> <laughs>